Hello there guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Sal speaking and today I'm gonna be talking about picks and also warhammers. The pick is a piercing weapon with a dagger-like blade. One thing you can do with this weapon, you can swing it with great effect. And also we're gonna talk about, we're gonna see different types of warhammers and we're gonna see also the relation between the two ones because the Warhammer is a related weapon used in Persia, India and Europe. In these countries, plate armors and chain mail was very common. So Warhammers were used many times for stunning the opponent's helmet. They were really powerful and they were built in several different types of materials. And so basically, Warhammers and picks were used in a great combination. They will, put, they will use both hands with both weapons, so Warhammer and also Pick on the other end, and that was a great combination. So come with me, let me show you some hammers, some Warhammers and Picks. Check this out. This is a wooden pick or pointed club from New Caledonia. This one is a, an Australian Aboriginal fighting pick. It's got a stone blade set on a wooden haft by means of gum. This is a toki, a Maori war adze from New Zealand, jade blade bound to a carved wooden haft. This is a Bronze Age pick also known to archaeologists as a halberd found at Skane, Sweden. An ordinary dagger blade was often attached to a bronze haft in this way, though some examples may have been purely ceremonial. This is a Zagnala, an Indian fighting pick, all steel with silver-plated haft. This is a all steel fighting pick from the Afghanistan-Pakistan border and it is decorated with brass and silver. This is a Kamayari, a Japanese fighting pick when used as a pairing weapon with chain and bow attached. It is known of course as a Kusarigama. This beautiful weapon is a fighting pick from India, sometimes called a Crowbill by collectors. The finest examples of this type of weapon are from India and Persia, where they were used against the chainmail armor popular in those areas. Okay, this is a detail of the route of San Romano by Uccello, and it is to be found at the National Gallery in London, also called the Oysman's Hammer. The blunt head of this weapon could stun an opponent or fracture bones even without penetrating the armor. The pick at the other side of the haft was probably the most efficient weapon for piercing plate or male armor. This is a typical plain horseman's hammer, wrought iron haft bound with copper wire at the grip. This is a wooden haft clad with iron on the upper half. It is Bavarian and we are talking about 1450-1500s. This is all still damascened in gold with a velvet covering to the grip, Indian or Persian. This is a square hammer head and octagonal pick on a wooden haft, possibly Italian and we're talking about 16th century here. This is a diamond shaped pick and slightly pointed hammer face on a knock haft, possibly French. We are around 1450. This is a wooden haft protected by long securing straps or langets and it is Italian. This weapon is a South German war hammer. It can be decorated with hunting scenes in gold and silver overlay. Was made, this one was made in the second half of the 16th century. Victoria and Albert Museum, London. Talking about 
Talking about wooden pick, the only thing that really fascinates me is the actual making of the weapon, you know? How they were making this weapon. The search for the materials, you know, the right materials, the right type of wood, and also the working, the carving and so forth, you know? Whatever it took to make this weapon, it's really fascinating to me. Though it's not my favorite weapon, I consider it to be a lethal weapon. Well, the Aboriginal fighting pick, this one makes me think about you know, prehistoric life, you know, hunting and, and all this stuff. It makes me think about how hard it was for men to make their own weapon, to go around and look for game and the killing and everything, you know, must have changed throughout the years, also the way they were like treating the meat and so forth and cooking the meat. At the very beginning, according to history, we know that uh, primitive people, they were using, um, you know, these tools that they were finding on the floor, like such as stones, sticks and so forth. And whenever they would uh, catch, you know, a, an animal, they would kill it, of course, and, they, and then they would, um, you know, eat raw meat, you know, that's what they would do and eventually, you know, would, the discovery of fire, they started to uh, cook and prepare their own meals, if we can call it this way. It is an interesting way of making weapons, the very fact of finding a stick and then, you know, putting a stone, attach a stone on the top of the stick. They would have had to find the right materials to attach the stone to the stick. Well, this is a very simple weapon. I've never seen anything like this before. We can say that this is a very small weapon, very interesting weapon, easy to carry. And I can tell you that I really like this weapon. It looks to be very versatile, easy to carry and easy to hide. This pick must have been used for ceremonial rituals and you know, as a ceremonial weapon. And to be honest with you, I don't really like ceremonial weapons. I don't like it, just don't like it. Don't ask me why, I just don't like it, you know, there's, there's no way, there's no way I would ever like something like that. Not for me, not my cup of tea, sorry. This weapon is quite interesting, although it's not my favorite. It's got uh, this, you know, Kind of it looks like a dagger attached, so we have, we've got this stick kind of, and we've got this dagger like attached to it. To me, it seems that it is a very effective weapon, especially in the battlefield. So I would call it a battle ready weapon. This one, this weapon here, it looks so effective to me, and it kind of scares me up. You know, I'm scared whenever I think about how they were actually using this kind of weapons against an enemy, against an opponent. The Kamayari, this amazing Japanese weapon, is my favorite of all picks. It is small, easy to carry, versatile, and maybe fast as a weapon as well. I love the shape of it. It's got a great shape. It seems to be a very effective weapon. Number one, my favorite one of all time, my favorite pick of all time is the Japanese Kamayari. And this is a fighting pick. The only thing I can say about this specific weapon, it was used against mail hammer and chain mail. It must have been quite effective as a weapon. Not my favorite, but still, I must say that it must have been quite good as a weapon, quite strong, quite effective and quite dangerous. We know that war hammers and picks, they were both used together in battle, so they were like used in a combination and that, that's really fascinating. I don't particularly like war hammers, you know, I just don't like how these weapons look like. Um, I don't know, they don't tell me anything, I'm, I'm like... Ugh. I don't like it, you know, just, I don't know why, but just don't like it, um, I don't see, I can't say I don't see how effective they are, because I'm sure they are effective, I mean, they can be, you know, 
they can really cause great damage to one's opponent. But apart from that, I don't like it. Sorry about that. I finally made it, you know, we came to the end of this video. I hope you really liked it. If you like this video, please thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content, for more videos. And hopefully I'll make more videos that you like and that will make you feel more satisfied. Because we need satisfaction in life. Satisfaction is everything. Thank you so much for watching guys and remember, if you feel sad, you better call someone.